Leaders and healers, gamers and claimers, ladies and gentlemen from around the universe, from around the globe, from around the community, welcome to the Power, Purpose, and Passion podcast. I am your host, Anthony Cheem, life coach, speaker, author, trainer, friend, musician, singer, songwriter, just a passionate, powerful human being wanting to serve, wanting to give the best of what I've learned over the past 20 years of my experience, my, my joy, every book I've read, every every tool I've learned throughout what my, my, my 40 years on this planet. I'm just here to give to you. And this is where, this is a podcast where we help you claim your power, clarify your purpose, and cultivate your deepest, widest, and highest passions possible. So you can ultimately show up as a better, upgraded, more enhanced, and advanced version of yourself. And ultimately, not just enjoy life, but reach higher higher stages of, of fulfillment through the contribution of what you've learned, what you've earned, what you're going to return to life. And that is to then help and inspire others to do the same. So thank you for joining us. Um, you know what? It's, such, it's been such a pleasure over the past, I'd say, two, three weeks, three, four weeks, actually, talking about nutrition, talking about fuel, talking about certain principles that I use, that I've learned, and that I practice on a daily basis about, about certain nutritional and fuel choices to amp up your, your physiology, to amp up your ability to stay focused, your ability to be uh, reco- recover and require less sleep and just to enjoy life and Cameron on the other end there he's he, he talks about the power that energy uh the the, the, the what, what do you say the, the desire is energy what's that what, what's that with saying you say cam what's that one saying you say you say when you're energy you're happy right when you're energetic happiness equals energy is that what the thing yeah, you that's say the, yeah that's the one ha- uh, you got it energy when you're energetic, equals happiness that's the one. you got it energy equals happiness and and when you're energized and you're optimized you're feeling good about life you're feeling good physically mentally emotionally you're, you're able to show up as a better version of yourself in your relationships and whatever endeavor whatever purpose whatever practice whatever you're doing whatever role you're playing whatever delivery system you're able to perform at high level so thank you for joining us and we're going to move into the next phase of, of the health and vitality for the next I, I, to the end of march uh we're doing 12 weeks of this and this is the power of re- realignment and what does that mean we talked about rest and the importance of rest you can go 12 14 15 hours straight but if you're not getting the proper rest uh, you're not using the proper tools uh, strategies, you're not getting the proper amounts of sleep. And here's, it's not necessarily what you do prior to what you do when you're, uh, sorry, when you're actually sleeping. It's what you do prior to sleeping and in between your sleep patterns as well. So we're going to talk about seven principles, seven practices that I use for precise realignment. And so that I, because when I sometimes, I used to burn out, I used to go full out. I'm a driven, passionate, high achiever and i would go push 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 to the point where i was i'd hit my hit tilt and then all of a sudden my body would just crash and then i felt like a, such a failure so i've learned to listen to the subtle cues of my body so make sure you get a little bit more aware about listening to the subtle cues of your body because it's your body is the most intelligent system yeah uh, there's this buddhist uh, quote that says uh the body is the engine or vehicle for egoless wisdom so we have to listen to our body the subtle cues of our body so we're gonna we're gonna talk about the first principle which is Using any holistic practice to tune you up. My chiropractor says, a chiropractor or osteopath says, when you when you realign your body, your spine, your pelvis, and your hips, it's almost like a car gets a tune up. And I use anything from chiropractic care to osteopath to you know psychotherapy to ART. I used it a lot during my as an athlete when I was training for my marathon. I was using it a ton because I knew my body was inflamed. It was out of alignment, and I needed to use not just rest and fuel and 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 a number of other things that I'm going to talk about too. But I was using massage chiropractic care, osteo- osteopathy, ART. And we got on, on our on our podcast, a special guest here uh, from Chatham as well. Oh, not from Chatham. He's from Waterloo, right, Bruno? Kitchener, Waterloo. And and um, he's he's actually a, a holistic uh, Reiki practitioner. And that's that's one of the holistic approaches that I definitely recommend too. He will talk to you. In fact, he's going to do it right now. And he's going to talk to you about what Reiki is and what he does and, and the benefits of it. Would you mind telling us about uh, introducing us uh, to yourself there, Bruno? Um, yeah, my name is Bruno. Um, I work as a Reiki practitioner. I have been doing it now for a couple years. I work out of Open Mind uh, Holistic Center in Waterloo on Herb Street. If you guys want to do it, go check it out. Um, Reiki is basically the use of the universal life force energy. It's channeled through my body. Uh, I'm just a tool. And I use it uh, to help people realign their shockers, their energy channels in their body so that they can 
um, see a, a progressive increase in healing, uh, not only in the physical body, but the emotional and energetic system. Uh, it's a great way to get a kind of a tune up, sort of say, like taking mm -hmm. your car to the garage. Uh, if mm -hmm. you feel like you have a lot of emotional baggage, it's a great way to get your body to release it so that you can uh, achieve healing within the physical system. Um, mm -hmm. Our bodies are what? Uh, there's over 72,000 nadis, energy channels in a body. And at any given time, depending on your experiences in life, they can get blocked. So my purpose is to actually go into the energetic system, unblock those uh, those channels so that energy life force can flow freely and then mm. you can get, uh, like I said, the benefits of healing, emotional healing, physical healing, mental clarity, uh, just an overall, overall well-being, state of well-being. Mm. That, that's fantastic. And, and and for the people out there, let me tell you something that we uh, typically, the traditions talk about anywhere that we have three bodies. We have a gross physical body and a subtle energy body and a causal spiritual body. And Reiki, and correct me if I'm wrong there, Bruno, that that the, that the Reiki deals with a lot of the subtle energies of the body, as you were saying, the channels and releases a lot of those energies. And like, guess what? If we don't, and we talked about this on previous podcasts about if you want a holistic, integrative uh, bo three body approach. You not just want to exercise your physical body. You want to exercise your subtle body. You want to exercise your causal body and you want those bodies to be aligned, harmonized, opened up, fully energized. You want to fuel those bodies with as much as you can. And you want to allow for recuperations uh, in, in, in those bodies as well. And, and, and Reiki is a perfect way to do that. In fact, one of my friends, Miranda, she's a psychotherapist, a gestalt therapist and a Reiki practitioner as well. And she's done wonders with me personally. She's an awesome, awesome human being. So I definitely promote that as well. So any of the holistic practice, uh, you don't have to practice all of them, but you know what? If, if you feel like you're tired, you chronic fatigue, uh, you're, you're eating healthy, you're exercising, but there's still some blockages. Try one of the, try Reiki, try, try, you know, uh, chiropractic care or osteopathy. You, the, these are, these are years and years and years of, you know, they are what I like to call um, alternative uh, practices other than just taking medication or, you know, going to a doctor and they'll provide, you know, prescribe whatever medication for your AMA. And that, let me tell you something. A lot of these medications, and I'm not saying I'm not killing Western medicine, but what I am saying is this, it's not the only way to do it. So a lot of times when you take Western or pres prescription medicine, what it does to your body, it alters it even more. And then you get another symptom of something else. You might experience chronic fatigue, or you might experience less energy. You might experience depression, or you might experience anxiety or, or terrible dreams or whatever it might be, right? So why not use alternative approaches to your, to your whatever that ails you or whatever injuries you have physically, mentally, emotionally, and release those energy so you can allow your body to heal? Is that, is that pretty accurate there, Bruno? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, it's said within a uh, holistic system like they have Reiki that everything starts in the energetic system first. Mm. And that causes a dis-ease within our energetic life force system. And then that transfers over to the physical diseases that we incur. Uh, mm -hmm. Westernized medicine is amazing, but they only treat the surface, the physical, and they don't yep. go after the purpose, the yep. cause. So yes, yes. treating the energy system first and allows the body to get past that blockage so that the physical diseases can start yeah. healing themselves. Yeah, you got it. And oftentimes I say to people, I was saying this yesterday at the workshop I was at that I was doing for two hours. I said, the cause of your problems isn't the source of your problems. Um, just because you take as an example, an Advil for your headache, it might take away the pain that headache, that, that headache is giving you, but it's not going to the source of why you're getting the headache. It could be, it could be dehydration. It could be stress. It could be anything just as you said. So the cause of your problems, isn't the source of your problems. You're absolutely right. And we want to be able to go to the source of these issues. Um, just because you've got, if you could have a, you know, a, a foot long gaping wound in your leg and putting on a band aid is not going to <laughs> help anything. So that's just a metaphor for life. So that's the first thing. So thank you, Bruno, for joining us. And thank you for that. We hope you, you reach out to him or any Reiki practitioner in your area or any of the things that we've covered. So that's the first thing. The next one is practicing yoga, Tai Chi or Qigong. And let me tell you something. I, I was very skeptical about this, but I'd say about 
12, 13 years ago about yoga and Tai Chi. I'm like, what is this? It's all these slow movements and all this breathing. I'm like, come on, this is ridiculous. And I started studying it. I started reading about it. I, I, I talked to friends about it. I met a few uh, Tai Chi masters who were so calm and they exuded this joy and energy, a few yoga instructors. And then I finally went to my first uh, hot yoga class in full yoga, uh, Lululemon gear, Long sleeve, long pants, and it was the biggest mistake I made because man, was I <laughs> it was horrible! And people, guys, were going in there with their shirts off. I was like in full like joggers and full sweater. <laughs> I'm like, oh my gosh, what what's happening here? But I I rather enjoyed it, and I can tell you, after my first experience, I couldn't help after the hour was done. I, I was in that shavasana pose, and then I couldn't help but be in the get up and, and be in the lotus position and connect my, my my index finger to my thumbs and just focusing on breathing. And I was so in the moment. I felt an overwhelming sense of joy and bliss and peace coming over my body. I also got into Tai Chi a bit um, and the movements within Tai Chi. And just from the little that I know, it has helped me just center myself because I'm a very energized, crazy person. So it's good to kind of... Uh, uh, meet that or uh, balance that with calming movements, slow movements, slow breathing and being in the moment. So practicing yoga, Tai Chi, Qigong, I mean, there's tons of yoga studios in the in, at gyms, yoga studios, try them out. I know a ton of people that are like CEOs that, that tried it and they're like, wow, this is like my downtime from working 12, 13, 14 hours. And it's a great way to kind of balance yourself out. So the third one is take a cold shower or a bath. It, let me tell you something. That is one of the greatest things you can gifts you can give yourself. In fact, people have heard of that guy Wim Hof, the Wim Hof method, and, he t- and that, that, that guy has run in like a marathon in minus twenty degrees Celsius weather, and he doesn't. He, I think he's a master of that uh, the Tumo inner heat. How he's able to kind of increase the the temperature of his body, which is why which is why he's able to do that, and he does it in his underwear and, and bare feet. It's unbelievable. But one of the things, um, the, the main co- primary causes of disease is in our life is inflammation. And if you try, you start taking hot showers, that's going to increase your inflammation. If you just if you just rolled over your ankle, you don't put on a heat pad on your on your on your ankle. You put on ice. Right. So what you want to do on a consistent basis, I know it's minus 30 out there right now in Canada and not many people want to take a cold shower. So what I recommend, at least for 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 the moment, start with a warm shower and end your shower with turning down the temperature a bit and maybe two or three minutes of just allowing the cold water to just go over your body. And let me tell you, something, let me tell you something after I did my marathon. I remember people taking ice baths and not as many people like doing that. And I went, I mean, literally my friend took me to SO and I bought like three bags of ice, poured it in an ice bath, filled up the tub, jumped in and it was, oh my God, excruciating. But thank God I did. I felt invigorated. I felt healed. I had energy back. And it's one of those things you feel like you're 10 years younger when you take a cold shower, a cold bath. It's one of the greatest things you can do for yourself. Okay. Uh, the fourth thing is getting sufficient amounts, uh, sufficient amount of rest and sleep six and a half or six hours to eight and a half hours, depending on, on, on your day, how old you are, your nutrition, the stress that you've, I mean, there's so many different, but listen to your body. In the wintertime, I definitely need more sleep because I do have seasonal affective disorder. And let me tell you something, in the summer, spring, I can go on four or five hours sleep and, and, and be completely fine. But in the wintertime, six, seven, eight hours sleep is, uh, eight hours sleep is usually what I, seven, eight hours is usually what I get. And I feel pretty good. And, and on the weekends, if I require more, I will give myself permission to. Otherwise, my seasonal affective disorder symptoms kind of skyrocket and I feel really, really low. So get sufficient amount of rest and sleep. Um, and, and if you need to take a nap, a little power nap, 25, 20 minutes, 15 minutes. I sometimes, oftentimes when I'm really tired, or I'm just like kind of not focused. I got foggy thinking. I'll literally lay down on my couch and I'll just close my eyes for about 15, sec- 15 minutes, focus on my breathing, kind of tear off away, shut off my brain, um, shut off that sort of monkey mind and just go away for a few minutes. And then I, I return and I'm, I'm back in the game. Number five is, which is, this is a big one. A lot of people take a vacation, whether it's one day, two days, three days, uh, a week. I'm going to Jamaica next week. And let me tell you something, it's, it's long overdue with all the stress in my life and the passing of my mom and my wife's grandmother. We booked it right after. I said, we need it. I think this is a good time for us to book a vacation, something to look forward to during the winter. And taking a vacation, it's like, it's like every battery, every rechargeable battery needs to return to their charging station eventually. That eventually, if it doesn't turn to the charging station, it will literally be zapped of energy and it won't be able to work properly. So vacation, you know, here's the thing. You take a vacation, you might be worried about your business, you might be worried about whatever in life and you leave it. Trust me, when you die, your inbox will always be full. 
Okay. You're, even when you, even if you get everything done, but if you die that day, people still send you emails and messages and texts and all these other things. So why not take a vacation? Because when you return, you might be triple, quadruply focused and even more driven. And, and that's what I treat my vacations on. Plus I get a, a chance to reconnect with my children, a chance to reconnect with my wife and just be in the moment, enjoy the fact that I'm abundant and I'm able to afford a, a vacation like that. So vacation. Number six, coaching, mentorship, and therapy. I would say probably one of the most important out of all these seven I'm going to cover. Only because you cannot see the picture when you're in the picture frame. When you have bad breath, you can't smell your own bad breath, okay? Only when someone points it out to you can actually, you realize you've got something going on. So it's it's like a metaphor. I love this metaphor. My mentor, uh, uh, discussed this with me and, and shared this with me. And I've always used it and I've, I've shared it with Cam. He, he's used it too. If you and I are in a forest right now and the whole goal is to get out and I and I, Cameron was given a map of the forest and I was given a walkie-talkie with a guy in a helicopter seeing down onto the forest, from the down to the forest. And he was looking down at us saying and instructing me where to go. Who's going to get out first? Probably, most likely me, especially if Cameron doesn't know he, he is on the map. He's going to be confused. So you can read all the books you want. You can go to all the seminars you want. But the one-on-one -on -one coaching, at least the least the one-on-one -on -one coaching, mentorship therapy, they can give you a, a personal approach on how specifically to, to look at your problems, to go deep into your problems and, and provide some insight and principles, maybe some practices to get you out of the forest. And that's the metaphor to get out, get you out of the dark room and into the light. And so let me tell you, for me personally, I have many of those in my life. I consider friends, some of them business colleagues, some of them just people that are spiritual people that have just helped me out personally, professionally, spiritually, and I've grown so much. And without those people, man, let me tell you, like Zig Ziglar said, when you see a turtle on a fence post, you can be darn sure that turtle didn't get up there by himself. So if you see someone that's successful in any, in any area of life, they've had some mentorship. They've had someone that's superior to them in intellect and in knowledge and wisdom. Someone that's helped them along the way to be a better and more improved and upgraded version of themselves. So get some mentorship, get around people that are better than you, get a therapist, get a coach, get a mentor, whatever it is, whatever you want to do, I guarantee you, there's someone in that field that is doing what you want to do better than you that can educate you. Why reinvent the wheel? Why try to figure it out on your own when you can take someone that's been in the industry for 20 years and save you 10, 15 years of heartache and stress and frustration? Go to that person. It was one of the greatest things that I learned a long time ago. I continue to go to my mentors and to seek out people that are continuously better than me in any field. And so that's what I do. So I hope you guys take that to heart. And the last and final one, is celebrate and have fun. How many people out there are constantly working, 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 and they just don't enjoy it? Trust and enjoy the moment. Trust and enjoy life. Trust that your life has meaning. Trust, trust that joy is probably one of the most important emotions that you can feel. And if so, you could have all the heights of success, million dollars, and all this cars and vacations and people praising you, but you don't enjoy it. Let me tell you something. It's just like you get to Christmas and you're like, oh, it's over now. It's the lead up to Christmas or whatever celebration that, that you find, you know, uh, invigorating that you enjoy. And like, it doesn't matter what it is. Enjoy the process. So when you actually finally get to the, your final destination, it's you can you can actually look back and go, wow, I enjoyed each step, good or bad or indifferent. I I I I enjoy the fact that I it's as Tony Robbins says, it's not about the goal, it's about who you become in the process of, of actually going after that goal and the, the, the lessons you've learned and then paying it forward to the people that uh, that can learn from you. So any 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 add-ons there, Cam at all or Bruno? I like the having fun part. That's probably my favorite. I think uh, there's there's nothing more energizing than enjoying yourself. You know, there's nothing yeah. more uh, recharging and like this this feeling of being filled up with joy. It's like yeah. it leaks into other areas in your life physically yeah. and emotionally and everything. It's I, I that's my favorite part. Oh yeah. And, and and that's why I include it in my book. I, that's why, because you can do all these little therapies and all these coaches, but if you're not having fun, as Jesus said, you got to be ch like, ch like a child and enter the kingdom of God. Literally children. I, I look at my children and they, they want to play in the snow. And I'm like, as adults, we're like, oh, I don't want to do that. But part of me is like, no, let's do that. Let's go jump into a puddle. Let's go get our clothes dirty. 
Let's go be like children again and just let go and throw away our agenda. And let's just, oftentimes I'll say to my family, what, what are we doing this weekend? Not much. You know what? Let's throw away our agenda. Let's go drive somewhere and be completely spontaneous in the moment. We lose that as adults. We lose that because we become so agenda and, and overproduction, overproving of ourselves when all we need to do is be in the moment, embrace the moment, let go of ourselves, let go of our outcomes and surrender. And that's that's what it's all about. And so just getting caught up in all these crazy things that we go after without relaxing, without being able to enjoy it. Let me tell you something. I've made that mistake too, where I was like grueling toward a, uh, an objective or a goal and then only to achieve that goal. And I was proud, but then I realized, mm -hmm. man, I didn't enjoy any of that. That was just, ugh. But then I, every goal I do, I'm like, I want to make sure I enjoy it, make sure that I, I love it. So what about you, Bruno? Any, any extra thoughts, man? Myself, to be honest with you, um, mm. it'd be the vacation one just yeah. because, well, I've noticed that a lot of people in the Western world, and not only in the Western world, but all over the world, they take a vacation and then they actually have to take another vacation from their vacation because instead <laughs> of going out and enjoying the time to connect with yourself in nature and oh my feel God, healed yes, yes. and relaxed, they go out and get shit faced and drunk and party. <laughs> And then they come back needing a vacation from the vacation they just took. <laughs> yes. So they really got no benefits out of it, right? So yes, my yes. advice would be to actually, if you need to, to reconnect with yourself and re-energize, don't go to a resort where you're going to be drinking mm. and eating yes. resort food. Go somewhere a little bit more uh, where you can get in touch with nature and you can actually yes. eat really healthy foods and recharge and reconnect. Because then you'll yes. feel way, way better when you come back. Yes. You so know what? You know, you make a tr no, you make an uh, thing. I, I think that's a perfect way to end this because the reality is, you know, one guy, uh, Bill, Bill Plotkin, he wrote a book and he's a phenomenal guy. And he talked about how, how the Western society suffers from NDD nature deficit disorder. And yeah, you're absolutely right. And I think we need to spend more time in nature, walking amongst the trees, talking with the trees and being amongst animals and, and going to an ocean or a lake and just watching the lake. That's one of my favorite things to do. And I can tell you right now, as Carl Jung said, he says, how can we claim that the years have taught us anything if we haven't learned to listen to the secrets that whisper in the brooks, listening to water dripping or listening to the ocean crashing against rocks? Bruno, that was, I, I, thank you for adding to that because that's absolutely right. Not just going on vacation to go party and drink and fine. That's part of life for, you, for many of you out there. I get, I get it. But balancing that with just some downtime in nature on the beach or in a forest or just just having fun, uh, just doing whatever, being totally spontaneous and in the moment. Yeah. So anything extra, guys? I think I think we covered it all. Yes. Yeah, we covered it all. Yeah, I agree. That was <laughs> okay. awesome. That's <laughs> awesome. So if you love this podcast, the Power, Purpose and Passion podcast, we are on multiple platforms, iTunes, Spotify, uh, SoundCloud, I think as well, YouTube, Facebook. Uh, please subscribe or comment or ask questions. We'd love to hear from you. Um, we love the fact that if we, if, we, if we release a podcast each day, we want it to be in your inbox or on your phone so you can listen to us on your drive home or uh, during your workout or whatever. A lot of my friends and family, they like to listen to it on their drive home and, or even in the morning. They get to listen do it it pumps them up they feel invigorated uh, invigorated and they feel good about their lives and they and they got something positive to look forward to and, and uh and apply that day so to your continued upgrade and evolution live it up with power purpose and passion to your endeavors and all your dreams may they come true god bless you guys thank you